Hey everyone, it's Ask the Truth here, and today you guys already know what we're going to be talking about. You already know what today's date is, you can see the title. So before we get into that whole thing, God, how I don't even know how long that's going to be, I do have a couple of channel updates for y'all. Now, when I made my Jonathan Isaac video, right, right at the beginning, I essentially said that I'm going to, to the best of my ability, try and upload once per week. And thus far, I've been pretty successful, I've uploaded on every Tuesday except for that Denver video which I ended up delaying until Friday and this past week I haven't been able to upload at all now one thing you need to know about me is that my personal life is that I work 40 hours per week and that takes a lot of time and energy out of my well-being and now this upcoming week I'm going to be starting school I go to school full-time and I work full-time now that begs the question of how I'm going to be able to consistently upload. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to stop YouTube. I'm going to try to the best of my ability to keep up with this because I did make this commitment. Um, the main way I plan on doing this is first you need to know how I make videos in the first place. So the way I make videos is that I come up with an idea, I research that idea, I script that out, like I make a very very specific script that I need to abide by because if I don't make a script I will just go on so many tangents and then the video will be d d double or triple the length it's like you guys have already seen some of my videos and almost every single one of them goes above 12 minutes and that's with a very specific script now imagine that with that one see I'm already going on a tangent so this you can you guys can already tell how it would be now I do a script and then I record that. That takes a long time to do as well because I'm very particular with my recording. And then I overlay that with a bunch of footage and clips or whatever you want to call them. And that takes a considerable amount of time. Now I'm trying to streamline this process so the turnover period for videos it's much much quicker. And the way I plan to do this is as opposed to just doing voiceovers and then putting a bunch of clips in to associate that with. I'm going to be doing face cam. Now, when you can expect face cam, it could be as early as next week. It could also be two months from now. I have no idea. I'm currently talking to one of my buddies that does kind of professional, semi-professional photography, and he's really well versed in that category. So I'm trying to get an affordable, really good camera as well as a specific area in my house where I can record and also try to touch myself up a bit since I'm going to be on camera. I'm trying to look the best I can. So that is the plan for the future, is to essentially do face cam so we can get quicker videos out. Now, now that's out of the way, let's get into the actual topic of this video. So today, well not today actually, today is the 23rd. This is actually Kobe Bryant's birthday. I had no idea his birthday was on the 23rd. So happy birthday to Kobe Bryant. And the day you're going to be seeing this is on Kobe Day, 824, August 24th. It's also my cat's birthday. Happy birthday, Raja, even though... He doesn't know what a birthday is, but it's okay. It's fine. He's turning nine today. Now, um, the topic that we have today is what Kobe Bryant meant to me. And this is a very difficult question. And I was saying before that the way I make videos is that I make a very specific script and I abide by that when I do my voiceovers. I tried my best to make a script for this. I really did. And I, I just couldn't. I, I really couldn't. This is just too sensitive of a topic that if I made a script for it, it would have just felt artificial and I would have gotten mentally frustrated. And I got mentally frustrated trying to write it out because it's just like, how do I put all my thoughts down on a piece of paper about a topic so large? You know, like this, this is something that's affected so many people this past year and this year, quite frankly, hasn't been the best one. But it's just hard to try and make a script for this. So we're doing, we're going off the dome. This could end up being the longest video that I'll ever make. It could be even be longer than my Celtics documentary. Oh, wow. That, that might happen. But the question goes back to what Kobe Bryant meant to me. Now, the first thing you need to know about me, if you guys couldn't tell already, I'm pretty overt about this. I'm a huge Celtics fan. A lot of people grew up with Kobe Bryant, and quite frankly, he's the reason why a lot of people, including players that are currently playing in the NBA, picked up a basketball to begin with. Now, we talk about how Jordan's the greatest player of all time, 
but J- Michael Jordan, now to give you context, I'm in my early 20s, mid early 20s, early 20s. I don't know. So when Michael Jordan won his last championship, I was still a couple months short of even being born. So none of us really grew up with Michael Jordan. We grew up with Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was our Jordan, essentially. And I'm saying our as a general sense of my generation. Personally, for me, my Jordan was Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett's my favorite player of all time. He is the reason why I picked up a basketball. So I can't give you the story of, oh, I saw a Kobe highlight. I watched a Kobe game and I was so inspired by this performance. No, man, I was the biggest Kobe hater as a kid, the biggest Kobe hater. And even throughout my high school years, I hated this man so much. And I mean, come on, if you're a Celtics fan, I'm sure you can relate to this. Obviously, you hate him as a player. And maybe when you were a kid that you don't, you can't really separate the concept of a player and an actual man. So I kind of just hated Kobe Bryant in general. But as I got older, I just learned to respect him. I mean, there was just sort of, sort of this mutual respect between Kobe Bryant and then the Celtics franchise as a whole. So I hated him as a player. I respect him as a guy, but he didn't really just, he didn't really mean that much to me. And the only memories that I have of him that were just of significance was one, we beat him in 08. And quite frankly, the 08 championship, I wasn't like following basketball all that much. So sadly, that wasn't really that significant to me, but 2010 I was 11 years old, and that man broke my heart. I mean, he broke my heart. I was the saddest person on the planet. I was so, so sad. But yeah, um, Kobe fans, Laker fans, I'm sure you're happy about that one. Um, I mean, it's a great story, of course. But I mean, at that time, I was the saddest person. And Kobe Bryant, I like I said, I, I did not like that guy growing up. But it's not about how it was, but rather how it is right now. Um... Now, like I was saying before, my generation, including players that are playing right now, so the 2017 NBA draft class, I'm around their age, right? And I am a huge Celtics fan, and I love Jason Tatum. He is our superstar. He's going to lead us into the future, and quite frankly, we might win a championship this decade. That could happen. The person that influenced Jason Tatum to pick up a basketball in the first place was Kobe Bryant, and... Quite frankly, this generation of basketball that we have that has been described as that we like the basketball is in good hands. Basketball is in good hands. A lot of them were influenced by Kobe Bryant himself. A lot of basketball influence of modern culture, whether it be shooting a paper ball into a trash can and yelling Kobe, Mamba mentality. We have Kobe to thank for it and how that's affected this current generation of players. But obviously that doesn't necessarily answer the question that I'm asking right here is what Kobe Bryant meant to me. Now, like I said before, is that Kobe Bryant didn't necessarily make a huge positive influence to me as a child and growing up. And quite frankly, anytime through his playing career, I was just like, F Kobe. I don't like that guy. Um, By the end of his career, I was a senior in high school. And by the end of it, I guess it was a little melancholy where it was just like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, I respect that guy. I'm glad I grew up in an era where Kobe Bryant existed. I really am. I was really glad. But it really was just an acknowledgement of that. It wasn't necessarily like, damn, it's really Kobe Bryant. And this leads me to a very specific story, which really opened my eyes. Now, one thing you need to know is that I live in, I live in the Atlanta area, right? And Anthony Edwards had committed to the University of Georgia. You don't know who Anthony Edwards is by this point. He is the top three prospect of this upcoming draft, which a whole other topic. But I really wanted to see Anthony Edwards. So I was planning with one of my close friends that went to UGA to go see Anthony Edwards. We ended up going to the Kentucky game, and that was incredibly fun. And I'm just like, okay, I got to go again, right? So I planned with one of my other friends, Eric, shout out to Eric, to go on January 25th. And quite frankly, I don't even remember what team they played that night, but we went. I went down to Athens, Georgia, and I watched Anthony Edwards play again. And I'm just like, okay, this guy's pretty good. And we went out that night, we had fun, and then we came back and we turned on Sports Center. Now, the significance of January 25th is that this was the night that LeBron James passed Kobe Bryant third on the all-time scoring list. And 
that was just such an amazing concept to me because by a lot of us, whether whether you think LeBron James is the greatest player of all time or the second greatest player of all time, that moment between LeBron and Kobe, you could just tell it was an incredibly, incredibly intimate moment between them because it wasn't like anything like, oh, hey, LeBron passed this really great player. It was LeBron James surpassed his greatest rival an incredibly in, incredibly important thing and said rival is incredibly happy for him so it was really just this melancholy moment and we were just me and my friend Eric talked for maybe an hour about Kobe Bryant and LeBron James's greatness it was just like wow like we're really glad that we grew up with these guys you know we grew up really good with these guys you know it's just we're really happy that we grew up those guys <laughs> there's not no way else to say it and it was really that night, that night specifically, where I just I just had this awakening of like, damn, like, this is Kobe Bryant. Like, I may have hated him growing up for the first 17 years of my life and then just felt neutral about him afterwards. But right now, I am so glad that, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a world where Kobe Bryant impacted basketball, impacted pop culture, impacted you know, my generation as a whole. I'm very glad that I had that and I'm eternally grateful for that. And I went to went to bed going with that thought. Now, the next morning, um, I left my buddy's apartment and I went to Best Buy to get some new Joy-Cons. So there were some green Joy-Cons that were on sale and my Nintendo Switch had some bad Joy-Cons because if you guys do have a Switch and you know about the drifting problem, yeah, that was the issue. So I got myself some new Joy-Cons and I went back home and I was really tired because... The distance from Athens, Georgia to my place is about, it's it's close to two hours, so I was really tired, so I took a nap, and I woke up. This Keep in mind, this was January 26th, the following day, and I woke up, and I got a text from one of my very close friends. This was actually the same friend that I went to the first University of Georgia game with Anthony Edwards with. This is the same friend, right? And she texted me saying, so my friend had texted me something along the lines of, it was very, very like, I don't, even, I don't know how to describe the feeling, but she said, did Kobe Bryant die? Please say psych. And then I'm like, hold up. Like, what are you talking about? And my initial reaction to this is like, I thought it was another like fake death report. Like, have you guys, do you guys know Blue's Clues? I don't know if any of y'all grew up with Blue's Clues, but Blue's Clues was my favorite kid show as a kid. And the main character was obviously Blue and then Steve. Now reports like every six months for like the longest time came out that like Steve from Blue's Clues died. You know, it was just Steve from Blue's Clues dies. And I'm like, damn, that's really sad. And then it comes out and Steve has to come out and say like, yo, I'm not dead, y'all. I don't know where this, this kind of report is coming out. I'm, I'm, I'm alive and well. And I'm like, okay. So my assumption that this was just a Steve situation where it was like a fake death report. And I'm just like, okay, there's no way Kobe Bryant died. Like this, there's no way. So I wasn't like the immediate denial. I was just like, okay, this is just another Steve situation. There's no way this is real. This is BS. So I go on Twitter and then I see this news article. And as you all know, I'm not going to bring up the specific details because quite frankly, everyone knows what happened. I was just like, there's no way this is real. There's no way this is real. Nah, nah. This is, there has to be a different person. It could be a completely different person with the same name. There's no way. There's no way it can't be him. And then throughout the day, it just became apparent. Yeah, it was him. Yeah, it was, it was Kobe Bryant who passed away that day. And it wasn't just him. It was his 13 year old daughter, Gianna. And that's what really I think that's the saddest day in NBA history. I think, I don't think there's any comparable day that we could look to and think of a sadder moment because this is a, this is just, this is unprecedented essentially. This is the death of an NBA legend. And the reason why I say it's unprecedented is because you look at the early NBA legends that built the NBA from scratch. You look at Bill Russell, the guy who won 11 championships with the Boston Celtics. He's still alive. Jerry West, who is the NBA logo, he's still alive. Majority of the legends throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, they're still here. We haven't lost them. They're all still here. But Kobe Bryant is the youngest, really the youngest legend of all of them. 
and he's gone. So we had just never experienced that before. And that's what made it so much of a, of a, a shock, really. That's, we haven't experienced such a thing before. So that's what essentially it hit me really hard because this was also right after the night, as I was saying before, where I realized the importance of Kobe Bryant, the, the awakening that I had of, you know, I'm really glad I did grow up with this guy. He this, this he was really important to my childhood, negative to my team or not. He was in, he was incredibly important to a whole generation of basketball and just culture in general. So it was really that concept where it's like we can't afford to lose that guy. And quite frankly, ever since then, the world state as a whole hasn't been the greatest. I don't want to be pessimistic, but you guys have an idea of what's been going on. Now, this goes back to the question, how did this impact me? I can obviously talk about the initial shock, and the way impact death impacts me is that I don't really process death that well. I don't break out crying or just question why. My body's reaction and my mind's reaction is, in the response to death of someone I know or someone close is that I just turn numb. I, I just, I become apathetic and it's just like a concept that I acknowledge. It's like, oh yes, this person is no longer here. And I don't like that about myself, but it's also, I guess, the way my mind copes. Maybe some of you can relate to that. I don't know. Um, when my very, very close friend's sister passed away a few years ago, I felt the same way. It was just emotionless. I felt emotionless and I guess that's the way I processed the trauma of it. And the trauma in general, it was just the concept of, you know, what if Superman died? You know that that comic the DC story of like um the fall of Superman. I forgot I don't even I can't remember the the story right now, but essentially Superman dies the doomsday and then this the world's just left in shambles because this was like the symbol of hope. And Kobe Bryant was our symbol of hope in basketball and it's just difficult, man. Now, this how this impacted me personally. Obviously, I'm there's there's the there's the initial trauma of it and the general basketball and cultural effects of it. But the way it impacted me. So one thing you need to know about me is that I spent t- the first 21 years of my life not not really that long, but majority of my life I was overweight. I was pretty overweight. Um, ever since I was around six years old, I, I become overweight and then I was just, that was me and I'm current, I am five foot seven and the highest weight that I ever been was pushing like the, the low two hundreds and the low two hundreds as a five foot seven man is, is very bad. (laughs) It's, it's not healthy at all. So I was around 200, like the, like 200 pounds when I was about 18 years old and I was able to get that down to about the 180s um, by just doing some basic exercise and cutting out soda. And I was still pretty overweight, like 183 as a five foot seven guy is not the healthiest thing. And I had been looking in ways how to really just get my weight down to a healthy amount. And I kept trying to work out, I kept trying to work out, I kept trying to do exercise and that didn't necessarily work. And I learned that I didn't really know that much about losing weight and I kept looking things online and all I would find is calories in, calories out. You got to burn more calories than you take in and then that did not work. It damaged my metabolism. It just was not a good thing overall. And then I learned about this thing, this specific diet. Now, I was very apprehensive to do this because it was a very big commitment but I was slowly learning it throughout and I knew the basic concept was to just essentially, essentially just cut out carbohydrates. And I wasn't fully committing to this because I was just like, oh, you know, I'm only 21. I have all the time in the world. I have my whole life to do this. But when Kobe Bryant passed away, I looked at myself and I realized that if I want to make positive change in my life, I want to make an everlasting change in my life, I have to do this and I have to commit to it. And I would think, what would Kobe Bryant say to me? And I imagine he would say, yeah, do your diet, do this, and get healthy. Uh, Now, this specific diet that I am specifically talking about is also the exact same diet that Kobe Bryant abided to for a majority of his career. And he quoted this diet as, 
giving him a lot of energy over younger people and increasing his mental, mental acuity. So if Kobe Bryant approves off a diet which made him incredibly dominant in his mid-30s, I think you can trust it. And if that's not enough for you, LeBron James also does it as well. And if you're wondering, man, how is LeBron James still dominating at the age of 35? Well, the ketogenic diet has to help for that at least. He spends a million dollars on his body a year, but that plays a big part of it. So I went full in and did the ketogenic diet. I was I started at 183 pounds on February 2nd, and as of right now, I am 147 pounds. Now, was this was this hard? Was this incredibly hard thing that I had to persevere through and just keep going, you keep going? No. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, this was for me, I have the the privilege of being a 22-year-old man where I have the the ability to adapt to things. And it was honestly an incredibly easy thing. I love this lifestyle now and I'm incredibly glad that I did it. I feel much, much healthier. My mind feels much clearer. I have a lot more energy now. And I have Kobe Bryant to thank for that because quite frankly, I think that's what really pushed me over to the edge to really make a decision. I guess the cliche of, you know, you only have one life and you don't know how long you're going to have it for. So I just decided... I'm going to jump into this, and now I'm 147 pounds. I plan on to bulk on some muscle in a bit, but I feel a lot healthier, and for the first time in my life, I am no longer overweight, and I feel a lot healthier because of that. I can finally look good in clothes. I look much better in pictures. I always had the insecurity where it's just like, man, like in this picture, I look so fat, or man, I feel insecure about having... um too much fat on my breasts it, it was just that general concept and now I feel like much better I have a lot more confidence in myself because of that and Kobe Bryant I have you to thank for that and it wasn't just me getting on the ketogenic diet and fixing my heart health my overall weight and mental acuity it's also the reason why I think I jumped back into YouTube because I was just I had not been doing well the past like year and I kept saying I'm gonna go back into YouTube I'm gonna go back into YouTube and then I just never happened but then when this happened I finally I planned out things and I finally jumped back into it and now here I am recording this video and that's really how Kobe Bryant impacted my life without him and without without Kobe Bryant I don't know if I'd be where I'd be right now so Kobe Bryant, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now that is the end of today's video. I know that this might be an emotional roller coaster for a lot of you. This might be hard for you guys to even, even talk about. But in the comment section, if you guys can, let me know some of your favorite Kobe Bryant stories. It could be anything from when you were a kid watching him on the TV. It could be meeting him personally. It could be, quite frankly, anything. And for anyone that has any aspirations or goals and you're putting it off, my advice is, what would Kobe Bryant tell you? And I think you know what Kobe Bryant would tell you, and it's to go for it. Whether it be weight loss or some career goal or getting back in your education, it could be anything. Go for it. You only have one life and you have no idea how long it's going to last for. I understand that's cliche, but you know it's true. So that's really all I have for you guys today. I have no idea when the next video is going to come out, hopefully within the next week. I'm going to leave a couple links down in the description for Kobe Bryant's foundations and charities that you can donate to. I'm going to making going to be making a personal donation myself. That's really all I have for you guys today. And once again, Kobe Bryant, thank you.